Bonjour et bienvenue à la semaine 6. Welcome to week 6. So uh, by this time uh, in week 6, you've already done all of your text exercises for the week and you came across one about yes or no questions. And that's important because you're gonna be using yes or no questions in this week's discussion. So I wanted to give you some additional information about yes or no questions uh, uh, in this presentation. And before we get into yes or no questions, I wanted to give you a little bit of cultural information. Uh, uh, this week and going into next week is the carnival season. So un peu de culture, c'est le carnaval. So uh, uh, next week, of course, is le Mardi Gras. Why is it Mardi Gras? Fat Tuesday. So why is it fat? Well, way back when, in olden people times, you know, back when I was young, uh, they used to parade a fatted calf down the street. Why did they do that? Well, it's because of the upcoming Lenten season in the Catholic calendar. And uh, this was your last occasion to eat meat. So this season right now is the carnival season. And uh, that comes from carne and wale in Latin, which means goodbye to meat. So it's goodbye to meat time. So eat up all your meat and say goodbye to it because you're not going to have any for a little while during Lent. If you're interested in more information about where else uh, the carnival season is celebrated in the world, of course, you can probably think of uh, uh, New Orleans and uh, even here in Galveston in Texas and Brazil, but it's also celebrated in France as well. In Nice, there's a huge carnaval. So check out the Carnaval de Nice there at that website uh, if you have time. So go and have a look. They sell t-shirts, so you can buy yourself a Carnaval de Nice t-shirt or a scarf from their website. Check it out. So, back to what we're talking about. Revenons à nos moutons. Let's get back to our sheep. So, we're talking about yes or no questions. Les questions à réponse affirmative et négative. And your text exercise really only showed you three ways to ask a yes or no question in French. Uh, there are actually four ways to ask a yes or no question in French. So let's look at those, and we're going to start at what I, with what I call the $1 way to ask a yes or no question. The $1 way to ask a yes or no question in French is just rising intonation. It's super easy. It's the easiest way to make a yes or no question. All you have to do is change your period to a question mark, and change the tone of your boy, voice, and boom, you've got a question. Super easy. So use intonation montante, and you have a question. So here's a statement, a regular old declarative statement. Vous parlez français. It just states a fact. It's got a period on it, and you can tell from the intonation that it's just stating a fact. But if we change the period to a question mark, and we change our intonation to a rising intonation, vous parlez français, you can tell that that's a question, right? You don't even have to know what it means. If somebody comes up to you and says, blah, 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 Oh, so they're asking me a question, right? So you can tell. Rising intonation, change a period to a question mark, and that's it. You've got a question, magically. So that's the $1 way. Here's another one. Elle est canadienne. That's a sentence. But change a period to a question mark, and you get an interrogative sentence, right? Elle est canadienne. Elle est canadienne. Marc étudie l'arabe. Marc étudie l'arabe. Turn it into a question. Marc étudie l'arabe. Marc étudie l'arabe. So make sure you change the tone of your voice to be very clear that you're indicating a question, right? You're not just stating a fact, you're asking a question, okay? So um, uh, before I go on to the $2 way, I like to tell my students in my face-to-face -face courses that for this lesson, and if you're doing these, if you're reading them out loud, you really need to channel your inner Mexican soap opera actor, right? So when I first moved to Houston, I was determined to learn Spanish, okay? So I started watching television, and I just fell in love with all of these Latin American soap operas. And they're awesome because they're super hokey. And every gag you can imagine in a story is in there in this compact story. One, one of these stories involved a character who died, right? So there's always this character who dies, but they didn't really die. And the character's name was Laura. So Laura dies, they have a funeral, and the whole next episode of the show was people seeing Laura at the bank. People seeing Laura on the other side of the street. People seeing Laura at the discotheque. And the same thing would happen to like 40 characters, right? So the music would stop, and the camera would zoom in on her face, and they'd go, Laura? So you have to channel your inner Mexican soap opera actor to give us vous parlez français, elle est canadienne, Marc étudie l'arabe. You have to really exaggerate those to so we'll know you're asking a question. So that's the one dollar way, rising intonation. The two dollar way is adding a tag phrase to the end of a statement. So you can add something at the end of a statement that turns it into a question. So you take a sentence, you add a tag phrase to change your statement into a question. You start it off with your sentence, then you use a comma, then you use a tag phrase, and 
then you add a question mark, of course. So use an additional questioning tone with your tag phrase as well. So it kind of adds on a little more question tone uh, at the end of your statement. The most common tag phrase is nespa. You probably see nespa, nespa, nespa. Uh, but there are others also like ok, 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 d'accord, 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 c'est ça, c'est ça, non, non, etc. So we have these in English. We say things like, isn't that so? Isn't that right? Don't you? Right? In Canada, they say, a. Eh? In Spanish, they say, verdad, at the end of a statement to turn it into a question. Lots of languages have these. So it's just something that turns a phrase into a question. All right? Um, this kind of yes or no question usually implies you kind of already know the answer. You're just confirming your own suspicions uh, about whatever that information is. So here's one. A regular old declarative statement. Vous parlez français. Well, if you want to turn that into a question using the $2 way, change a period to a comma and add your tag phrase at the end and then a question mark. And you get, vous parlez français, n'est-ce pas? Vous parlez français, n'est-ce pas? Another one, elle est canadienne. Elle est canadienne just states a fact, right? You want to turn it into a question using the $2 way? Change a period to a comma, add a tag phrase. Elle est canadienne, n'est-ce pas? Elle est canadienne, n'est-ce pas? Marc étudie l'arabe. Turn it into a question. Marc étudie l'arabe, n'est-ce pas? Marc étudie l'arabe, n'est-ce pas? That's the $2 way. So the $3 way is to start your question off with something, right? So here comes this question word, and it's called esque, esque, esque. That's pronounced esque, right? So it's esque with a Q-U-E if the next word starts with a consonant, or it's esque, and that's Q-U apostrophe, if the next word starts with a vowel. And if the next word starts with a vowel, maybe like the pronoun el, it would all be pronounced together. Esquel, esquel, esquil, esquil, right? So make sure you link them together. We made that apostrophe on purpose. So that's the third way. Ask a yes or no question. Take your statement. Start it off with esca uh, or q u apostrophe if you need to, if the next word starts with a vowel or a silent h. So that phrase doesn't really mean anything on its own, right? It just means, hey, you, here comes a question. That's all. So uh, don't go up to the airport counter uh, uh, at Charles de Gaulle when you go to Paris and say, est que? And expect people to know what you're talking about because it doesn't mean anything, all right? So listen to the intonation in these examples. So here's a phrase, vous parlez français. I'm going to turn it into a question. Est-ce que vous parlez français? Est-ce que vous parlez français? Elle est canadienne. Est-ce qu'elle est canadienne? Est-ce qu'elle est canadienne? Marc étudie l'arabe. Est-ce que Marc étudie l'arabe? Est-ce que Marc étudie l'arabe? Anne et Jean travaillent à Starbucks. Est-ce qu'Anne et Jean travaillent à Starbucks? Est-ce qu'Anne et Jean travaillent à Starbucks? See that QU apostrophe even works with proper nouns as well. So it worked with elle and it worked with Anne as well. So that's the $3 way. The $4 way involves a change in word order, and this change in word order is, call, is called inversion in French, inversion, right? So the last way to ask a yes or no question involves a change in word order. Usually, all you have to do is find your subject pronoun and the verb, flip them around, and separate them with a hyphen, and you use a question mark at the end and some questioning intonation as well. So... Um, there's a little more work you have to do uh, uh, if your sentence is not just a, a plain old subject pronoun and a verb. If your subject is a third person singular pronoun, if we're talking about il or elle or en in your question, if that's the subject, and your verb ends in a vowel, you have a little more work to do there. You need to separate them with that hyphen t hyphen, okay? And that's to keep the vowels apart. Remember, French likes to be consonant vowel, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, and it finds itself crazy little ways to force itself into that pattern, right? Hyphen t hyphen. It is one of those crazy little ways that uh, French forces itself into that consonant vowel, consonant vowel pattern. It's just so the Eiffel Tower won't collapse, okay? So uh, it doesn't mean anything, right? You can't go up to the lady at the bank and go and expect her to know what you're talking about. It's just to keep the vowels apart. It's just so French is pretty. That's all. So if your subject is a noun as opposed to a pronoun, right, you got even a little more work to do. So in addition to changing the word order, in addition to uh, uh, using that uh, inversion business and possibly using hyphen T hyphen, you'll also need to come up with a pronoun that renames the subject. In these sentences, you started off with your noun subject, whatever was given to you, then your verb, then some kind of hyphen marking. Maybe it's just a hyphen. Maybe it's hyphen T hyphen, if you're talking about third person singular verbs with vowels, then a pronoun. Uh, then the rest of your question, right? So here's some you know, question examples with the $4 way. So here's a statement, vous parlez français. So here, all you have to do is find your subject pronoun, 
vu. Find your verb, parli, flip them around, separate them with a hyphen, use a question mark, and use questioning intonation. And that gives you, parlez-vous français? Parlez-vous français? Sounds fancy, huh? So, here's another one. Elle est canadienne. Elle est canadienne. So, in that statement, you can do the same stuff as you did in the first example. Find your subject pronoun, elle. Find your verb, e, and flip them around. But now we have a problem because we have vowels coming together, right? So, uh, um, I'm sorry, not vowels coming together. We have a consonant that gets pronounced, right? So, it's going to be not e, and then the next thing, l. You need uh, something to separate those. And you already have that t in est that comes back, and you do pronounce it in this case. So, it's etel. Etel. So, you get etel canadien. Etel canadien. Here's another one. Marc étudie l'arabe. Marc étudie l'arabe. So here, find your noun subject first. Who's doing the studying? It's Marc, right? That's the subject. So now we need a verb. What's he doing? Étudie. That's our verb. So we have that, and now we need some kind of hyphen formula, right? In this case, uh, uh, we need hyphen t hyphen. Why? Because the pronoun that we're going to use after it to rename Marc, which you have to kind of pull out of thin air, Il uh, uh, is what we're going to use. We need to separate that with hyphen T hyphen and then the rest of your statement and a question mark and question intonation, of course. And that gives you Mac. Étudie-t-il l'arabe? Mac. Étudie-t-il l'arabe? Notice, by the way, that with this question, Mac, étudie-t-il l'arabe? There's no comma. Even though there's a verbal pause, Mac, étudie-t-il l'arabe? There's no comma there, all right? So don't use a comma, even though it feels like you kind of need one, you don't. All right, here's another one. Anne et Jean travaillent à Starbucks. We've already seen this statement a million times, but now we're going to make it in uh, a question in using inversion. So here, you're going to start it off with your noun subjects. We have more than one here. Anne et Jean. Now we need a verb, travail. And now we need a hyphen. And now we need a pronoun that renames ma Anne et Jean, right? So that's going to be what? Well, one of them's a guy. So we need a third person plural subject pronoun where at least one of the people is a guy. Il, plural, right? So, Anne et Jean travaillent-ils à Starbucks? Anne et Jean travaillent-ils à Starbucks? So, in review, the $1 way, rising intonation. The $2 way, use a tag phrase at the end. The $3 way, start it off with ESCA. The $4 way, use inversion. So, what does all this have to do with the discussion that you're doing this week? Well, this week, you have to write four questions. You're going to write four yes or no questions. Uh, preferably about pastimes and activities, since that's kind of vocabulary of chapter two, and you've already done some stuff like that. Your first question will be the $1 way. Then number two will be the $2 way. Number three will be the $3 way. And number four will be the $4 way. So here's some examples. So you can't use my examples. So here's one. Tu regardes les émissions de télé-réalité? Tu regardes les émissions de télé-réalité? So that's the $1 way, right? Just plain old rising intonation. Here's another one. Tu aimes les films de science-fiction, n'est-ce pas? Tu aimes les films de science-fiction, n'est-ce pas? So, $2 way, using a tag phrase at the end. Est-ce que tu joues du piano? Est-ce que tu joues du piano? So, that's the $3 way, right? Using ask at the beginning. Joues-tu au football? Joues-tu au football? So, that's the $4 way, using inversion. So, you need to come up with some questions like this about pastimes and preferences and activities, things people like, things people don't like to do. So, once you've posted your questions, and you have to post these by noon on Thursday, you'll need to answer one question from two different classmates, right? So, it's actually two questions that you have to answer, one with, different, with a different person per answer. So, uh, you have to do that by noon on Saturday. So, everybody needs to get their questions posted by Thursday, and everybody needs to get two questions answered by Saturday, right? So remember that these are yes or no questions. And that usually means that your answer starts off with a yes or a no. We oui or no in your answer, right? So how would you answer the questions that I just asked you in the examples that I gave you? Let's have a look. Regardo. So here's my questions and some answers. Question one. Tu regardes les émissions de télé-réalité? If you wanted to answer affirmatively. Oui, je regarde les émissions de télé-réalité. Notice I had to do something with the verb, by the way. I had to change it to the first person singular, because now I'm talking about myself, right? Negatively, non, je ne regarde pas les émissions de télé-réalité. Or, tu aimes les films de science-fiction, n'est-ce pas? Tu aimes les films de science-fiction, n'est-ce pas? Affirmatively, oui, j'aime les films de science-fiction. Or negatively, no, je n'aime pas les films de science-fiction. So, you're using ne and pas to negate your verb, right? That's also this chapter. Est-ce que tu joues du piano? 
Est-ce que tu joues du piano? Oui, je joue du piano. Oui, je joue du piano. Non, je ne joue pas du piano. Joues-tu au football? Joues-tu au football? Oui, je joue au football. Oui, je joue au football. Non, je ne joue pas au football. Quick word for my Spanish-speaking friends over here. Notice that in all of these examples, in all of the questions, and in all of the answers, there's always a subject, a written stated subject. In Spanish, you can kind of cheat, right? And you can leave off the subject pronoun, right? Um, in French, you have to have a subject pronoun. It has to be written. has to be stated. You can't just have a verb, right? If you just have a verb, that means you're ordering people around. You're saying, play football. And that's not what we're talking about in this chapter, okay? So, careful. Make sure you have a stated written subject pronoun. All right, uh, a few more little pieces of information for you. This week's discussion is a little different. Remember that before your original post is going to show up, it's going to come to me, and I might need to edit it and look at it and give you some tips on how to correctly, correctly formulate your questions. You know, maybe you forgot something. Maybe you missed some little uh, particle or article or preposition, whatever. So I'll have a look at it and, and uh, tune it up for you before it gets posted. So don't be alarmed if it doesn't appear immediately, right? So it's going to come to me, and I don't always do that instantly. I'm, I'm really good. I'm responsive, but I'm not that responsive always. So go ahead and look at Chapter 2's vocabulary and start thinking about the four questions that you want to ask to your classmates, right? And your original posts for those four questions, the ones you have to formulate, are due noon Thursday, and you have to answer when uh, uh, by, by noon Saturday, okay? Merci, au revoir.